Our friend Jeanette Vilda is back again, creating a lovely little purple journal using our two purple sets of papers. Hello and welcome to PM Artist Studio. Your support is greatly appreciated, and please let us know by liking this video and commenting below. Now let's join Jeanette. It's Jeanette Vilda, and I'm going to show you how I made this cute little journal. This one uses um, gorgeous papers from Pima Artist Studio, and it's really just a notebook. I am the kind of person who I sit when I'm working, um, especially when I'm making something like this. I will jot down notes such as um, dimensions, um, and maybe make a sketch of something. And I don't know, I like to have it in something cute. But you can see I've put little tags in here, um, stickers from my stash, um, all kinds of things that I found. Just not too much because yeah, again, the idea is for it to be a notebook. So they're little envelope and little guys, but really the focus is on just making a little notebook and the colored paper kind of just for pretties, um, maybe spark your inspiration as you're working, that kind of thing. So I've got this example now. This one um, is, what size is this? This one is three and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches. You can make these any size you want. This um, I made from scrap paper that I had sitting around. And I had just made a book for a little girl. And I had stickers and stuff, and I had stuff left over from that. So I just made another one. And then she can have that, again, as a little notebook just to write stuff in. So that's another example. That's, you can see it's a little bit bigger. And then I made an even larger one. Um, this one's for my husband, which is why the very first thing you see inside is Babylon 5. He's a big um, astronomy nut, and so, and then, it's open, this one that doesn't have any lines, so this one was made from him. And you can see it's a lot bigger because he wanted bigger pages. So, both of those are done with my scraps. This was done with, again, all of them are done with scraps. But um, this one I spe you know, used a specific suite of papers from PM Artist Studios. Oh, that's a paint <laughs> chip. <laughs> It's actually, uh, I think this is actually the color we might have painted the downstairs, so. <laughs> and this is just leftover paper from making this book that I just put into another little notebook. You know, I use all my bits. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Really, really, really simple. And what I've used is the two suites of paper. Let me make sure I get the names absolutely correct here. We've got the purples and yellows, so Artistic Endeavors Meets Tea Time, which I just, I love that name. And what is the other one called? And they're both gorgeous purples. Pleasantly Plush Purples, well that's just an awesome name. <laughs> artistic Endeavors, I love that. So, the papers are really gorgeous. Um, I've got a few that I ended up not using. They'll just get used in something else. And so you can see the gorgeous colors. Um, hopefully they're coming through. Uh, on my monitor, they're a little washed out. So hopefully the beautiful purples are coming through. Um, definitely go take a look at their site. You can see them in all their gloriousness. And these are A4 size papers, or eight and a half by 11 size papers. I printed them two to a page. And to get the specific size that I wanted, so typically you could print them two to a page and they would print like this. But that got me a slightly different size. Let me see if I can show you that. No, I forget which one of these was that size. Um, but it got me a slightly different size. So I wanted it a little bit longer and just a tiny bit taller. And so I actually printed them this way. So when you print, you can tell it, you know, horizontal or vertical. 
or portrait landscape, play with those and that gets you the way that you want. Now also when I printed, what I do is however I print my main pages, there's, and the um, one kit, you have a lot of really cute little um, embellishments that you can use, ephemera pieces, and I always make sure to print those the exact same size that I printed my pages, just so that they're scaled to work with whatever size I've printed the pages. Now obviously you don't necessarily have to do that, you can print them larger, you can print them even smaller if you want, but I, you know, I like it to be scaled accurately. The only thing with that is that some of the ephemera pieces, um, which had some real detail on it, lost all that detail when I shrunk it down. So, um, but like again, I don't want to use too much ephemera in the book because it's really just a notebook and that kind of gets it chunky and I don't really want it chunky. So what do I use for my pages besides that? Well, let me show you where I get all my stuff. So I collect <laughs> and I keep everything. Ooh, that's, come on, focus for me. Thank you. I keep everything in these little note um, pockets, I guess. And you can see there's all kinds. And decided which ones I wanted to use and then each of my signatures I'm gonna have five signatures each of them I'm using three of the pattern paper two facing this way one facing the other way just cuz <laughs> and each signature will start um, with one facing to you and then I just randomly put in all my different papers so these are really thin papers. I mean, these are meant, you know, these are in notebooks. They're meant just for jotting down notes, not for drawing or sketching. Um, so that means I can put a lot more into a signature than I usually do. I'm using eight pages here. I could probably put even more in. Um, the only thing is I don't like them to stick out. And the more you put in, the more they stick out. And I don't also don't like taking the time to cut off the edges. So. <laughs> And I'm just going to randomly grab, I'm going to go back and forth, I'm going to, in the middle here, I'm going to, oops, open that up. I'm going to use the one that I folded inwards. And another one, and another one, and, and then I'll end with him in the inside. There we go. So, so to make all of these, to cut them the way I wanted, of course, I got some leftover pieces from cutting off the pages. Keep all of these bits because you can see when I put in and make something like a pocket, for instance, let me just grab one of these little ephemera pieces that I've got here. If I can grab one. It's a tiny little pocket. And so big things aren't gonna fit, but guess what will fit? These little pieces that got cut off, I can fold in half make like I did the little notebook and that's gonna fit in there. And it just gives me an extra little place to jot something down. So I always keep your bits. Every bit is terribly useful. So, so through the magic of television, I've already made my five signatures. Now I'm gonna show you these two signatures. They had these papers that I showed you before are the little note paper that I just really loved, right? Notes and stuff. And I didn't want to lose the pretty at the bottom, so I didn't want to cut this one. So it sticks out, and obviously I don't want it to stick out, so all I'm gonna do is go in there and I'm gonna fold it up. 
and I'm just eyeballing it, I'm not measuring or anything, just so that it sticks inside there. Fold that up. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. That's the same thing, I didn't wanna lose any of the pretties from the paper, so I'm just going to fold it up. Now you could either leave that, and then you, have a, you can open it up and write as you will, or I'm gonna use, this is a teeny little stapler. Staples, very tiny little staples. And I'm just going to staple the two sides. And it automatically gives me a cute little pocket. Now the only thing I have found with um, when I make pockets this way is that they do kind of pucker a bit. If you um, don't like that because things will slide out, I have found that if I put another staple real close to the bottom, again, I'm not you know, stapling up into it, just real close to the bottom. If I staple there, you can see it pulls it down. Well, hopefully you can see that <laughs> if I angle it. There you go. See, that pulls that down just a bit. It really helps to keep it, you know, things inside there. Now, there are all kinds of colored staples out there. Um, so you can make that pretty if you want, cover it up. Doesn't bother me at all. So, and so I'm going to do that with both of them because I would prefer the pockets to the fold outs. So I'm going to staple this one. And I'm not being terribly exact about it. And I'm going to go ahead and staple here at the bottom because I have found that my stuff does kind of fall out if I don't do that. So. All right. So I have my five signatures. Okay. And now I'm going, I like to put everything together in terms of my pockets and ephemera and everything before I put it in the uh, cover. So like I said, I've got, these are the little guys that I um, took from the ephemera page and printed out. Again, I printed them nice and tiny so that they would match. So if I'm looking at this, I've got a couple of tags. Those are cute. Those will go in some of my pockets. I've got these long strips. These will make good side pockets. And then there's a bunch of these. Ooh, I didn't get the side of that cut off. There's a bunch of these little labels, which are great. These will make either, you can use them as labels, right? If you fold them in half, you can put them on the side. You can staple them onto the side and then you'll have tabs on the side. Just note that um, if you don't want them to stick out side of your cover, so here's my cover. If you don't want them to stick out, then either make your cover you know, wide enough that they won't stick out or really tuck them in. So let me go ahead and show you what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and fold one of these guys. So if I attach them to this page, for instance, as a, as a tab, that's gonna stick outside of my cover. What I can do is either, again, make the cover a little bit bigger if I don't want it to stick out, let it stick out, or just slide it in. Now, it doesn't stick out quite as much when I'm going through my book, but it's, it's thick, and since everything in here is pretty thin, it should stand out, so you can still have a tab. So th these make really nice little tabs. Um, they also make nice little journaling cards to go into your pockets. And then there was a bunch of journaling cards. Again, they can make journaling cards or they make nice little pockets. So I can use that. Um, there was this really cute little flower. I'm gonna use this on my cover. So keep him to the side so I don't accidentally use him. Cute little uh, trade. What is that, a check? Very cute, so that'll make a nice little addition. This one's a bit big. What I could do with this, and what I'm probably going to do with this, is I'm going to fold this one in half. Oop. There. And slide him into one of my pockets. And so everybody else will either 
not get used or there'll be a pocket like I said we got some slide side pockets um, I could cut this off here I got another label and a, another card that I could use you could also for example for this one I'm going to do this a little differently so I get this on the nose and use my score board I'm going to line up where this scene is here score that and fold that over now if I use a paper clip or I could put a magnet on here um, I like to put a magnet, then maybe put a sticker or maybe one of these labels over top of it to cover the, up the magnet. And another magnet on the other side, again covered so that they close and snap together. This can be used like a bookmark. And so I can bookmark where I am throughout my notebook. So that makes a really nice little bookmark. So. That's what I've got, so I'm going to make all of my little pockets and things, and then I'll be right back. One note I wanted to make <laughs> before doing that. So I have seen when people make pockets, they have, so here is my signature, and we can see it's folding to this side. Oftentimes, people will put a pocket here, okay? Or maybe a tuck spot and you put it down in this corner. The reason we do that is you have a tendency, unless you're left-handed, um, to see things to the right and your eye prefers that. However, as the book turns, the book will always turn like this, which means anything in there will always fall towards the center of the book. So I always put my pockets and everything to the seam of the fold. So if I'm gonna put in this as a long, I'm gonna put it here instead of over here. Because again, every time this page turns, everything's gonna fall out of it. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, your, your mind, your eye wants it to be over here because we have a tendency to see things that way but everything will constantly fall out, especially if it's um, maybe a bit bulky, so it's heavy, so it naturally wants to fall. If you have it this way and tuck it in this way, it will always stay in your book. So just so you know, that's, at least so that's how I see it. So, all right, back to making my things. Okay, I wanted to show you another something. So I went through my stash of cards and everything and added a few extra pieces. I like to have um, inspirational words, you know, different little things to kind of spark thoughts, if you will. Um, this one is a little top 10 list. Now the one thing I get concerned about in these is, um, these are thin paper, I haven't used, I think it's 180 maybe. Maybe not even that, um, 150. And so I get just a little bit concerned about the smallness and th whether this is going to hang in there. So if you're a little worried about that, I like this stuff. So I've got, a, as you can see, a boatload of it. This is masking sticker paper. And you can find this just about anywhere on Amazon, um, eBay. And they come in sets and you can see I got every single set. <laughs> What's nice about them is that it's got thin strips. If I bend it, you can see there's strips. And then on these ones, there's some circles. Now, some I have also have um, triangles and squares. I think pretty much all of these are just strips and then circles. As you can see, yeah, they're all strips and circles. I have some that also have triangles and little squares, but this is all strips and circles. What's nice about this is here, I don't want to do too much to it. I'm gonna take one of these strips, and this is just washi tape, but it's all cut up into little pieces for you. I'm just gonna put a little strip there on the side. Okay. It 
just I think it one it adds something looks pretty cute but also it just gives a little bit of extra stability to that pocket so if things come in and out that um, it just stays on there a little bit better so one thing you can add I could also have put a circle down in the corner that would have helped so yeah these are quite useful and like as you can see they come in a very wide array of patterns and colors and it's all washi tape it's just on these little sheets and I'll cut up for you like, and you can see again it's the same thing little strips all right back to the decorating okay so I haven't completely finished decorating but I uh, made a few just to give you some ideas so for instance um, this is a journal card that I had in my stash I just glued it down at a nice little pocket on this side this is one of the ephemera pieces from the kit and glued it on top and bottom and used those washi tape strips to make a little belly band I'm gonna take those that out for now Let's see I think that's all I've done in this one here I used one of those strips and a couple of the little cards to make some journal cards I'm gonna take those out for now and on the back here, I um, showed you putting this on with the washi tape, and I just stuck one of those little tags into the pocket. And inside here, put one of the labels on. You can write in something. I think that's all from that one. And then here, I used one of the little journal cards, put a little washi tape on the two corners, and that made a little pocket for this little ephemera piece. I think that's all I've done. That just gives you an idea of how to use the different ephemera pieces. Um, it's up to you again if you decorate before you put it together or after. Um, the nice thing is I'm not doing anything that requires, I'm not stitching, I'm not even inking. I mean the idea here is you're just making a quick little notebook, real simple, and so inking just takes away from it. So what I've done is gone by my size here and this is three inches wide by, and I forgot, and by three and seven eighths tall. And that was just um, dictated by the printout. I cut around it, so that's what I got. Three inches by, and I just forgot what I said. <laughs> but anyways, um, I like to keep my spines smallish, not too little, not too big. I've got five signatures, so I'm going to make uh, all of the books that I've shown you today have all had one inch spines. And I like that size for these types of little notebooks. So I've already scored. So this is just some nice thick cardstock. And it's for this tiny type of little notebook, it's just fine. So I've already scored it. So I'm going to fold on my folds there just so I can see them now what I like to do is on the inside so I've got two sets of um, corresponding cardstock here on the inside I've made them almost exactly the same size as the cover and along with a spine piece and the other side the reason I'm doing that is just to reinforce my cover. Just gives me some real nice reinforcement for my whole cover. Um, especially on the spine, because I'm gonna be tying around the spine. I want to just to give it a little more stability. So I'm just gonna use some glue here and glue these guys all on. And I'm using glue and not double-sided tape for no other reason than it lets me move it around a bit and because I'm making this almost exactly the same size as my cover I don't want to accidentally 
muck it up. So I really want it to be exactly where I want it and the glue just gives me that little bit of wiggle room to do that. Again, for the spine piece here, it's just a little bit narrower than my fold and a little bit shorter. So like I said, that will just reinforce my cover. And that's for the inside. Now the outside, I'm only gonna put cardstock on the front and the back. And that's really just because that's how I like it. So I've made these a little bit smaller. So it's about a quarter of an inch or eighth of an inch. Um, as you can see on this one, I actually used a die to cut out the front and the back panel. And so they're a little bit smaller than the cover. This one I made just a little bit, like I said, I think it's about an eighth all around. And then I've got the other panel for the back. But what I wanna do first is I like having that little journal on there. And I have just a set of stamps that just all say journal. And I keep them, because I use them quite a bit. I have them all on this, <laughs> it's actually a laminated card that I made once upon a time for a journal and didn't use it and I love dragons so I laminated it and now I use it to hold my little journal stamps on there. And I'm actually not gonna use the thing, I'm gonna use my, simply because this cardstock happens to be a little difficult and I don't want to, mess up the inking so and this is I mean use a sticker and you don't have to even decorate it I just like the word journal on there so which one do we want to use for this one I think we're gonna go with this one I haven't used it yet and it's very cute okay just eyeballing that This, the, the cardstock's kind of slick. So by, whoop, <laughs> by using the Misty, it gives me, a, yeah, you can see it really stamped badly. So by using the Misty, it lets me go over it as many times as I want and get it really clean. And that's good, I think one more time. Clean my stamps. Learned that from a Tim Holtz class. <laughs> Put this back into my box. All right, so we have our little journal. Put my misty away. Like I said, I kept the and I kept it here. So um, let me see. I think I'm going to. Right here. There. Now clean that up. So that's good. Like this and like that. That looks cute. Glue that on. 
bunch of snails or something on there, or some foam or something, but I don't like too much bulk with these kinds of things. Like I said, it's just a little notebook and find my bone folder. I'm just gonna go over that, make sure it's nice and adhered, nicely firmly on there. Also, when you fussy cut, especially if this is pretty thick paper, it gets all nibbly on the ends. So going over it with the bone folder flattens it all out. All right, so let's get this on our cover. folder. Just to make sure all the edges are nicely adhered. Okay, so now we need to put in our signatures. I like to use uh, Baker's Twine. You can use ribbon, Baker's Twine. You can sew them in using the pamphlet stitch if you like. I just, I think, you know, these cute little notebooks look really adorable. Plus, if I want, I, I can always slide these out and put in another set of papers. So, I like the Baker's Twine. So, what I want to do first is decide the order of my signatures. And I usually go by color. I like it to go different. So, So what I do is start from the back. So I'm going to take the very last one and I've already cut my twine. What I like, um, I've got several different purples here. I think this is kind of a purpley blue color and I've got five pieces, two of the dark purple, two of the blue and one of this light purple. So I'm just going to go with my dark purple first. How I cut this was I held my cover and then held this to the side and pulled like this, Let me, there we go. And then took one and then just until it was just a little bit past the cover. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I wanna add some beads to the side, you know, um, onto the little strings that are hanging off and I want a little bit of room in case I want them, you know, whatever length I want them to be, I want to have enough on there that my little fingers can, <laughs> can make the knot. <laughs> now I'm doing this all by myself, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get me these tweezers. Now these are the kinds of tweezers that are shut until you squeeze, rather than the kinds that are open then you squeeze to close. These are quite nice when making knots all by yourself. So I, I want my knot to be on the top, so you can also decide wherever you want. And that will determine you know, how you also measure and hold your string when you're closing. And then I'm gonna make my knot. And then I'm gonna use my tweezer to hold it for me. So I'm just flattening my cover out a bit, bringing it up to where I want it to be. Squeeze it as much as I want. Don't want to go too hard. Now that's why I reinforced the spine because like I said, I'm going to have this tight. I'm going to use my two fingers to hold it while I take my tweezer and I'm going to push that in there. And that's going to hold 
the knot the tie there for me while I make my knot. It, I love these kind of tweezers because it's like having a, um, another pair of hands to hold and I can squeeze right onto it and then slip it out and there's my knot. Works really well. Nice and tight. And I do, I'm gonna get a dent. It's just gonna have, this is cardstock. So I'm gonna get a little bit of a dent, but that's why I put in the reinforcement just so it you know, hopefully doesn't totally rip. I haven't ripped them yet, and I've been doing this to every one of them. And I'm gonna change my order here because I'm not liking that this green one goes to that green one. So I'm gonna switch the, that one with that one. <laughs> I get nutty about that. And I'm gonna do the next one. So I move to my blue one. I'm just gonna keep doing this. Come on, done. Okay, so I've got all my signatures in. And now you see I've got all these little strings. Everybody's in. Works nicely. That one's upside down. <laughs> oh boy. Did I do that on all of them? How did I manage that? you check okay and how about that way hey right way up and I gotta pull the string the other way all right do this again I did that so you could see me tie this one more time. <laughs> My mistake, opportunity to learn. I don't have anybody else upside down because when I put on the nope everyone else looks perfect because when I put on the beads I'm going to be cutting the string so so about the beads now since I'm using baker's twine it's kind of thick um, depending on what you use, think about that. If you want to put some beads on, you're going to have to be able to get them through the holes of the beads. So, considering that, you know, I've got a number of different types of beads. There's these guys with these really big holes. The only thing is, is they're a bit big for this particular journal. Um, maybe on the larger one, that would be great. I also got these which I kind of like, but again, they're a little bit big. And I had this one bone blue, so I didn't have enough of the, kind of a brown purple, but I thought would have been good, but they're a little big. But these are all because I have big holes on them and the strings will go through. I also have these guys. They're not terribly large holes, but they're larger than normal. But I'm gonna go with these. 
bunch of these guys. I'm just going to grab a little jar here and pick out 10. So that guy's an outlier. I don't think I have any more like him. No, I don't. So I don't want to use him. Don't want to go too big. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. to use two of these bigger ones but they don't have very big holes so I'm gonna go to this next size down that looks good actually I think I have one two three four five of that size and one two three four five of that size there we go that's what we'll do now on both of the books that I've done with the beads, the beads that I had had large enough um, holes that I could easily put the strings through. But if you have a little difficulty getting the beads, the strings through the uh, bead holes, you can use this little guy. So it's a bead needle. You can see it's just a circular piece of wire wound around on each end with a big hole in the middle. What this allows you to do is, so if I take one, put the string through the hole, don't have to go very far, and then I can put it through the hole of the bead. Now, you again, it you can't, you're gonna be shoving this through and it's gonna double up, right? In order to go through, it's doubling up the string. So you want to know that the hole is gonna be able to take it. So this one may or may not work. Yeah, that particular one's not gonna work. So that's what you do when you have cheap beads, is it broke. So I'm gonna keep playing with this. I might have to move to the other beads. Because the, oops, sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. My cats eat these things, so be careful. For some reason, these bigger ones have smaller holes. So I think I'm gonna have to go with, funny enough, the small ones. Because they actually have larger holes than the big ones. Okay. So I'm just gonna let me go to one of these small ones so you can get an idea of what I need to do here. Now I know I can use bead needle with this. So I did this one earlier and you can see the hole is just a lot bigger. And this one's going to take a little work. And of course now that I'm wanting to do it, it's going to not do it. I just did this earlier and now it hates me. Alright then. That one's unraveling is probably my problem. Let me use this one. This works perfectly every time you want to do it until you turn on the video and then it doesn't do it. There. <laughs> See? Told you. All right. So what I'm going to do is kind of decide where along the line I want it to be. And there are several ways you could do this. You could put a knot in the surrounds. So you can see this. I could put a knot just here on the end, um, make a nice big knot, and slide it. It'll slide down. Then it'll be able to slide up and down freely. Or you can do what I'm going to do, um, is which is just tie it. Or you can also, if you have a bead crimp, you, and of course, again, the bead crimp would have to have a large enough hole to slide onto your whatever string it is that you're using. And I'm just going to make two knots here to just ensure that it's on there nice and tight. Nothing special. I just knotted it around the bead. <laughs> And then just use some scissors and I'm not going to go, I don't want to go too close to it. 
I'm just gonna snip that off so it looks nice. So I would do that for all of these. And that gives me a cute little look to my book. Some little beads. Of course, you can also simply cut these off. Uh, you could braid them. I think that would look really cute down the side. I'll braid it up. I just, I really like the bead look. And you can see I like to make them all different lengths so that it's nice and frilly. If you had bound these with ribbons, you could just tie cute little bows into them. So lots of ways to make it pretty. So I'm gonna I'll finish getting my beads on. I think I have to maybe look and maybe add in some of my other beads and mix a bit because I don't think I have enough of the ones that have the wider hole. So think about that <laughs> before you pick whatever trim you're gonna use to close up your journal. So there is my complete journal without the beads, but it's complete and very cute, very nice to use. Um, if you want a closure, a nice one would be maybe a ribbon. I would put that on before putting your cover on so you can put it, um, put the cover, or sorry, this little um, piece here on the front, put that on first so that that nicely holds it down onto it. But you can see they're not exactly puffy. Um, this one's a little slightly more puffy than this one, um, but it will actually, after using it for a bit and opening and shutting it, it will stay closed, but you can see they're pretty much the same. So they really don't need a closure. And there you go. So definitely give that a try. Go take a look at, <laughs> those beads are gonna roll around the floor. Um, go take a look at PM Artist Studio. They have some gorgeous papers, as you can see. And wonderful, I think every one of these in, um, handmade, painted, or digitized by them. Just really gorgeous images. So go take a look. And this gives you another idea for how to use their beautiful papers. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.